Hi, Chef Bob Neroni here at EVOO Cannon Beach Cooking School. Today we're going to break down in New York, and this is probably one of the easiest things to do once you get the hang of it, but based on what it's going to cost you to do it yourself, even if you make a lot of mistakes, it's still more cost effective to cut your own steaks. Starting with a whole New York strip loin. So this is boned out, this is where the bones would have been, but this is a full New York. A little intimidating when you first look at it, but I'm going to show you how to break it down. It's always easier to start on the back end. So let's take a quick look and Emily's gonna zoom in here. This is a little bit of connective tissue that used to be connected to the bones themselves. And then using a very sharp knife, I'm just gonna go ahead and take some of this off. And by some of it, I mean really all of it. I'm gonna trim it up. And as I go, I'm gonna just gather what I consider to be usable trim and not usable trim. Usable trim is what I will grind for hamburger or chili or whatever have you. The unusable trim is the stuff that no matter what you do and grind it, it's just not going to be good. So this currently is usable. All good stuff to grind. At this point, you can kind of see there's this seam. Can you see it with my, where my fingers are? There's this little seam here where this represents on the other side kind of the tail of the tenderloin, excuse me, of the New York. So I'm just gonna go ahead, mark it with my knife, and cut through. This, I'll show you at the end, we're gonna trim this off. This is great for skewering for other purposes. So this is still considered usable. Kinda of square it off a little bit. Just kinda of clean it up. Good, sharp knife is your best friend. Okay, then I'm gonna flip it over to the front. And there's also a seam here. You can kind of see it just kind of following right over here. I'm gonna take my knife and just with the tip, just expose that seam. And in doing so, kind of frees up the connective tissue between the meat and the actual loin. You can kind of see right here where I'm separating it. All the stuff right here. If you don't get it on the first try, go back and do it again. There's no wrong way. And then I'm just going to follow that seam down, the tip of my knife. Um, I find in, in all butchering, the anatomy of all these animals is pretty straightforward. Once you kind of hit a seam, just take it off and you're good to go. We're going to Shake that off as well. Some of this is usable, some is not. But we're gonna keep it in the usable pile so it doesn't get mistaken. Then, using the tip of the knife, I'm gonna trim off. This is probably fascia or fascia. Not sure the correct pronunciation of that, but this is that connective tissue that no matter what you do to it, it's not gonna cook, up, cook down. It's always gonna be tough and chewy. So we're gonna remove that completely as thin as possible, but all the way off. And this is gonna be the first of the non-usable pile. Show more of this and you kind of decide as you go, what do you think you can grind, maybe what you can't. Good. So this looks pretty darn clean on this side. Uh, a couple little places just to trim off. And again, this isn't gonna be wasted, so it's all right. All right, now we're gonna flip it back over. And you can see this was, when I was over here, dun, 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 this was what we call the, the, the chain, uh, more like the tail, if you will, on the front end. It leaves this nice exposure. If I just kind of bring my thumb in, I can just tear that back, bring it back to the front. So I'm not even doing any knife work at this point until I get to a point where it's not cooperating, which is right about here. And this is just surface fat. Now this fat will melt down, so if you're somebody who likes to melt down suet, this would be your suet for french fries. By the way, that little purple ink stain, that would have been where the USDA inspector put his or her stamp of approval. We're gonna come up over here. This is where the nerve end is. So you can see close up that this is still a good steak here and a good steak underneath here, although very thin. But in between, there's a nerve and we're gonna go ahead and remove that, separate the two out. So 
So first things first, carefully cutting that fat away. Which exposes the nerve steak, at least the top of it. So that's, it smells great, but not usable. But the nerve end is now exposed. I find myself flipping the meat over back and forth to make it a little bit more user friendly as I go. Ultimately, you want to be comfortable when you're doing this. So there's a very thin layer of fascia of that connective tissue and, and um, well, just not edible stuff right here that we're going to go ahead and get in and start to slowly shave away until we find where we are. There we go. Then we're going to make some thin cuts, slices all the way down. Again, I'm keeping all the trim just so I get a sense on what my real cost is when I'm done. When I find a big piece like this, I like to kind of shave away and work it away from me. So I got one little slice, there it is. Nice. So I'm just shaving, shaving. Good. I'm assuming we're capturing all this. Yes, mm -hmm. good. And then you can see I've left very little meat on this fat, which is good. That's all the non-usable stuff. Turn it over again. I'm going to come on the other side. You can see the benefit of a sharp knife. Again, well, however this looks to the viewer, the reality is <clears throat> whatever I spend on this, it would be so much more expensive to have a butcher cut your steaks and then you wouldn't have any of this trim as byproduct. And this is all about saving some, some money, but also realizing that every time a butcher's knife touches a piece of meat, cha-ching, cha-ching. So you can see right now, this is the nerve end, you can see this little, in this case, it's kind of a V-shape. Sometimes it's more horseshoe. But you want to find where the nerve is and where it ends. So you can kind of see it come around right here. So I'm going to come right on top. I'm on top of the nerve as we speak. And it's a pretty big nerve. I think that's where the expression comes from. You've got some nerve. That's just my view of the world. All right, I'm gonna come on the other side to release it. All right, looks like I captured a piece of it still. All right, nerve is no good. This is actually pretty good eating. This is, you know, this is the, this is the New York without the nerve. It's no different than this on this end here. So we'll be cutting a steak from that as well. I'm gonna put that in my very usable pile. And then we're gonna come back to the nerve end and literally start to shave it away. This is where you want to take your time because these thin steaks at the end are still very usable for our purpose. This will be ground or skewer. This is a steak, that's no good. So <clears throat> when you're done, this is what we refer to as a naked New York, fully cleaned, 
fat and quote unquote denuded. <clears throat> the reason I'm doing this is uh, the Mediterranean diet, so to speak, I hate to use the word diet, but Mediterranean format um, professes no more than four ounces of animal protein on a plate. And red meat, which is what we're looking at here, should only be once a month. So if you're gonna do it and you're gonna get four ounces, it should be the best that you can get because it should the flavor and the quality should go a long way. This is grass-fed, grass-finished, no grain whatsoever, which is the healthy way the animal eats. Um, botanists have been hired to determine what grasses the animal should eat to make the ultimate end product taste even better. But if I cut a steak from this at four ounces, I'm still gonna be paper thin. By the time I sear one side, it's overcooked. So what we're gonna do is we wanna get it to the point where I can do a four ounce block cut. So to do so, first things first, I'm gonna take where this nerve end was, where the meat tapers right here, and I'm gonna cut that off. That's still usable meat, let's not forget it. Then I gotta determine, will my four ounce steak be better served as a third or in half? And I'm gonna say a third. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut one long piece of meat there and one long piece of meat here. So for this, choking it up, I'm looking at a four ounce block cut. Perfect. So now I can sear this meat all around, get a beautiful caramelization, and then because it's me, it's serviced, once, <coughs> once it's cooked, cut it down the middle, and show the beautiful inside fanned on top of each, of each other. So I can go ahead and start cutting my steaks. I will toss this in grapeseed oil um, or canola oil. It doesn't matter, you want a high smoke point fat. It'll keep the meat from oxidizing and preserve it longer. Um, it's def definitely where you wanna go. Before I take you off camera, let me come back and I'll be cutting all these steaks in a minute. But I did promise that I wanted to take you back to this tail. And so I'm gonna just basically trim that down. Beautiful. And you get a quick sense that everything can be utilized. So that beautiful piece of meat right there, we can cut that, do a quick stir fry, fajita, or skewer it for kebab, or cut it bigger, however you want to do. So, recapping where we are. This is usable trim that we'll use for grinding into burger, chili, etc. This is where all my steaks are gonna be come from, and this is gonna be my get rid of it. So from a standpoint of what I yield, I would consider this 50% of my yield, maybe 60% of my yield, eh, 55, 60, is all for steaks. Another 15, 20% is burger meat. So you would have paid for this from the butcher, but not had the benefit of this, and this is just trash. So I have about a 30% loss based on what I'm visually looking at here, which means yeah, it cost me 30% really more than I paid for by the time I'm done, but it would have cost you a heck of a lot more than that had you bought this already pre-cut. So that's it, that easy, watch this video again, two or three times, you're gonna be a master. And as I said, any mistakes you make with the knife, don't worry about it, because they're your steaks, they're still gonna taste fantastic, and it's still cheaper than had you had it done by a butcher. Bon appetito.